Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay. Today we're doing a very glam, bluish purple, just outer space vibes type of glam. Haven't done a more glam video in such a long time, so I just wanted to play around with some makeup for some fun, easy to watch, just relaxing content. If you guys are stuck at home or just want something to take your mind off of all the chaos going on right now, hope you guys are all staying safe and enjoy this fun video. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you and give this video a like if you enjoy it at any point. But if you want to see how I got this look, then keep watching. All right, guys, let's get started. We're over at my vanity today. Just to change things up i feel like i haven't filmed over here in forever as i mentioned in a previous video i will have a new setup starting in april because i am moving so i'll have my own studio space finally that's really exciting and i can't wait for you guys to see it but let's get started on the makeup i'm using the wonder beauty foundation which is a little bit more dewy i want to start with a matte primer because i haven't really tried that foundation with a matte primer yet this is the first aid beauty Pores Be Gone Matte Primer with Fig Extract Oil Free. I'm just taking about a large pea-sized amount. I do really like this primer. It's super smooth. It does have silicone in it, but I kind of like that to smooth out the skin. It does have like a strong fruity scent. I like First Aid Beauty scents. I don't think they're too overpowering, but if you are sensitive to scents, you probably would not like that. Now that we have a very smooth base to work off of, I'm going in with the Wander Beauty Nude Illusion Foundation in light medium. And I'm just gonna start swiping that on my face. So anyway, I've been really liking this foundation, testing out a couple different ways, hence why I wanted to try it with a matte primer today. I think it wears really well on my skin. I've worn it for a couple days now. And I feel like if you have really oily skin, this might be just like a little tad too dewy for you. You could try a matte primer in like a mattifying powder, but it just like, I feel like inherently has more of a satiny type of glow to it. And also depending on the amount you use, you get different amounts of coverage. Same with the application. With a brush, you definitely get way more coverage out of this. And I used to be a fan of like using foundations with brushes, but now I think I've really been liking it. With certain foundations, I feel like some just like work way better with a sponge. But I like to apply like the majority of the product and then go in with a sponge to blend it out even more. So I think the primer is working really well at the foundation. It's definitely giving it a more matte finish. I'm gonna add some more just to boost up the coverage. Next up, I wanna do a little bit of bronzing with like a cream bronzer slash contour. This is the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue in Chestnut 09, which is it's a little bit on the warmer side, so it's more of a bronzer for me. It's not super warm though. This is super pigmented, so I feel like you need the smallest amount. I like to sort of do this tapping motion. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of contouring too. Now that we look crazy, I'm taking a sponge to dab this in. This is a very hydrating foundation stick. If you have dry skin, like you would love this foundation. Definitely on the dewy side, but not like in a it's gonna slip off your face in an hour type of dewy. Got like a mini chin strap going on down here. I like to do contour or cream bronzer before concealer in case I have to go in and sort of clean anything up. Usually like the nose if I do too much, I bring it up the sides just to even everything out. I'm gonna use the Kosas Revealer in the shade 02 today just for some brightening. I feel like this concealer is really interesting in terms of its formula. I wasn't really expecting it to be like, it's not really dewy, but it does have like a glow to it. I like it's a good medium between a just like totally matte concealer and a very glowy one. So it doesn't like sink into lines. So the shades in this concealer, the lighter ones do work for me. But I am curious if you have deeper skin, do you find like the, that the tones are correct or are they like a little warm? I've heard people say, the shades are really yellow. Now that we're blended, I'm gonna use the Hourglass Translucent Veil Setting Powder. You guys know this isn't my favorite, but I'm still trying to like try it out. I just feel like it accentuates lines a little bit, but I haven't tried this yet with the Kosas concealer, so maybe it'll work. That actually looks really good with that concealer. I feel like my powder face is the weirdest makeup face. I'm always like, you know what I'm saying? What do you think the weirdest makeup face you make is? Is it mascara face? That one's usually pretty weird. You guys have a favorite under eye? I feel like this under eye always looks way better than this one. Like this one is two years older than this one. 
somehow. I'm also going to set the rest of my face with that same hourglass powder. I do like this powder for under the face. I mean under the face. I like this powder all over the face. It's just not my favorite for under the eyes, but with the Kosas concealer, I feel like it looks good. We'll see how it wears, because usually that's where I feel like once my skin gets some oils, even though your under eyes don't produce oils, but like once my face warms up the makeup is when I start to see like some creasing and stuff. Next for bronzer, I just pulled out the Cover FX Monochromatic Bronzer Duo because I feel like I haven't used this in a little bit. I'm going to mix these two shades, mostly the matte, but a little bit of the shimmer side as well, and then apply that. We do have like that cream bronzer on, so I won't need too much extra color, but I still like to add a little bit on top. Just changed my mind about blush. I think I want to do like a really dewy cheek to go with this look, even though the eyes are dramatic. I feel like dewy skin always sort of like bounces out a dramatic look. So this is the Tower 28 Beach Please Tinted Balm in the shade Magic Hour, which is my favorite. It's just this really pretty sort of nude pink that goes with like everything. This, I'm using my sponge. I just like to get a little bit on there. Tap off some of the excess because these are so pigmented. It's really easy to go overboard. And I just like to tap it on my cheekbones while making this weird face. For my highlight, I want to use the Cover FX Custom Enhancer Drops. This is the shade Celestial. It's just a mini I got free with my order around Black Friday. For this, I'm using the flat side of my sponge and then again, dispersing it on my hand before I put it on my face to make sure we're not going too crazy with it. I find that these apply really well over powder, which I wasn't expecting for a liquid highlight. I feel like most liquid highlights, I really have a tendency, tendency to like stick and pick up on your foundation. But these ones do not, thankfully. They do dry really fast though, so you have to work quick. So as you can see, that's like pretty subtle. It doesn't look super shimmery, which is another thing I like about those. They're not very glittery. They do have things called glitter drops, which are a totally separate thing if you want glitter. Next to set everything, make it a little bit more dewy, I'm going to use my Lila B Glow Face Mist. I love this, it's pricey but it's so glowy. I feel like a good dupe is the Pixi Glow Mist. That one I feel like is a little bit more like it sits on top of the skin a little bit more, but they're both really nice. So like the Hydrating Milky Mist from Pixi, I'm actually gonna use this because that one just ran out. And right before the mist is completely dry, I like to use my sponge and go over everything. I feel like this just takes any powderiness away. It makes the skin look really just like your skin and not like makeup. All right, let's do our brows. I'm gonna use probably a pencil at first. I'm gonna use my Thrive Cosmetics pencil because it's the one I have on hand. So use NYX Micro Brow, ColourPop, any of those like thin eyebrow pencils. I usually buy more of a drugstore price because I go through them really, really quickly. Now that I have like a basic shape, I'm going in with the Eco Brow Pomade in the shade Sharon. I really love this pomade. This is really great if you need a lot of filling in because sometimes with a pencil, it could be like tedious task to fill in a lot of sparse areas, but this one is just really pigmented, just like Anastasia Dip Brow, and it wears really nicely. Alrighty, finish that up, and I use some concealer around the edges just to clean my brows up because I feel like I still, after years of doing makeup, can't do a perfect brow. If there's one part of my makeup I would rather not do, it's definitely brows. You may be doing microblading. If you guys have ever done that to your brows, what do you think of it? Let me know. Because I do, I feel like my brows are so light, like it really does take a lot to build a shape. Let's get started on the eyes next. I want to use the Natasha Denona. This is the mini Lila palette. This is only, I believe, like $15. It's like on sale on Sephora. I will link it below for you guys. But you get these really nice berry tones and I really want to do a look, purpley blue look. I feel like I haven't played with colors in the longest time, so we're just going to go for it. Just to start, I'm going to take this top matte brown. I really like how they give you a matte brown as a transition shade. I feel like a lot of like smaller, colorful palettes don't always have that. And it's really helpful because if the look is colorful or not, a good transition shade is always helpful. You can use bronzer too, or any neutral brown you have. And I feel like a transition shade is so important because once you start putting bolder colors like purple, berries, anything like that, 
it's just gonna blend more into your skin instead of being like super harsh against just your natural skin. I'm also gonna run that on my lower lash line. Next, I'm going to start with this berry tone, a little more muted than this shade down here. I'm just gonna start with a more tapered brush and put that right in my crease. Starting with a little bit because you could always build up more if you want. This is almost gonna act like a transition shade for the deeper purple as well. Oh, it's not looking the most blended, but let's try this next deep purple shade, which is a lot brighter than that other shade. And I'm gonna start this closer to my crease and on the outer V. Really cool thing I did notice about these shadows, like I literally don't get any fallout, even with these deep purples, like none. I'm feeling like I need a bit of a deeper purple, so I just remembered this Victoria Beckham. This is the Tweed palette. This purple shade is so gorgeous. I'm gonna use this to deepen the crease even further. Oh yeah, that's what we needed. And with yet another matte purple, this is the Elia Cool palette. I don't know, I'm having a hard time with this blending correctly. I don't know if it's the base we put on, the lids, like the concealer from Kosas. It could be it, because it's like, all of the eyeshadows are not blending that good. All right, I think that's the best we're gonna get for now. I did clean up the edges with some concealer, but onto the lid, I wanna use this bright purpley blue, so pretty from the Natasha Denona palette. Why do I feel like that's a tongue twister? It has just this really gorgeous shift. Probably my favorite shade in this palette. It's so stunning. I'm gonna use my finger for this, just for the most color payoff. I guess I'm just doing all over my lid keeping it close to the lash line and then blending it upwards into the crease shades we put down. I do a version of this look, I think it was in my Elia Super Serum review. It was a little more toned down than this, but same basic um, shade placement. I really do love how you can get such good impact with these, with just using your finger without any fallout. And a little bit more of that shade, I'm gonna start tapping it into the crease very lightly just to get those crease shades to blend in with our lid and look more cohesive. I never used to like putting shimmer sort of up in that crease, but I feel like it really almost makes your eye look bigger. Next, I'm taking that same shade just on a little pencil brush. I'm going to use this for the inner corners just so I can get it precise in there without using my finger and hitting the bottom lid. Next for our inner corner, I'm taking the Rach Loves Pixie Collab Palette. These are highlights, but I love using them as shadows as well. I'm taking this lightest champagne color. I'm going to use this right on the inner corner and sort of on top of how far we dragged it in. This Natasha Denona blue shade is probably one of my favorite shades I've ever put in my eye. It has the prettiest like glitter to it. It's almost like a blue with like this tealish green shimmer. To start on the lower lash line, I'm gonna take the same combination of colors I did. So I'm gonna take this shade and then this shade and really smoke it out down there. Next, to make this look even more intense, I wanna use one of these Rowan shades. I don't know if I'm gonna do the purple or the blue. I think I'm gonna do the blue so we can bring out the lid shade even more. Just using this on my finger. I'm gonna tap this on the center of my lid. Since this does have a little bit of a chunky glitter, I'm keeping this on the center. I like these Rowan shades as well because they add like a really cool texture to the lid since they are chunky but not in like a very glittery type of way. They're super interesting. I want to get the warm palette too. I think this would be so pretty for summer. Here's what we got so far. I'm going to do a black wing liner and throw in some lashes and then we'll be back to finish up the rest of the face. All right guys, I went ahead and finished up our look because my battery's about to die but I put on just some liner lashes. I used lower lashes go viral and then for my lips I used the Patrick Ta I believe these are the silky lip creams and she's independent just for a really nice neutral lips since the eyes are so dramatic this was so fun to do I hope you guys enjoyed it I had a blast I feel like I haven't done a really dramatic look like this in the longest time so I hope you enjoyed it don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and want to see more videos like this but thank you so much for watching everything I use will be linked and listed below and I will see you in my next video bye